She was facing criminal charges all because of what she posted on social media. It's been three months of, you know, being concerned I might be thrown in jail for tweeting. <laughs> Well, it all started when that Howell woman took to Twitter to call out COVID misinformation at school board meetings. Livingston County Sheriff investigated, was recommending charges. Now, months later, she's learning she will not be charged with cyber stalking. Jason Colthorpe spoke to her today and one of the women she singled out online. Jason. Yeah, let's start with who is involved here. First, you have the woman who took to Twitter and the two people she actually singled out online. One is a nurse. The other is a professor of nursing. And as we saw when the arguments over masks and mandates took place, a lot of it had to do with people who were at the opposite ends of the political spectrum. And that is the case here. Anyone wearing this without being fit tested is ineffective. The vitriol on display at a few Brighton school board meetings last year spilled onto Twitter. Specifically, Casey Helton, there to observe, took offense to two nurses declaring the ineffectiveness of masks, claims with which most doctors and nurses disagree. They were both presenting themselves as nurses in, you know, in when they were giving their presentation. Um, that, to me, is what was over the line. So that is why... You know, they did not have to do that. They did not. They could have said, you know, speaking as parents. And if they would have said that, I probably wouldn't have done anything. She also saw to tag the employers of the two women, which prompted a complaint and a call from a Livingston County Sheriff's deputy. And then he informed me that I was going to be um, recommended for charges on this cyber stalking statute. And I thought at, at that point, my thought was that. I was trying to be silenced. I felt that when you start going after someone's livelihood, that is crossing the line, said Sheriff Mike Murphy in a statement. I had no idea who the focus of this investigation was until Casey Helton turned to social media. So to say this is politically motivated could not be further from the truth. Sheriff Murphy said that um, he wanted to use my case as a, as a test of some kind to see how he could um, further prosecute First Amendment issues. And, you know, I'm not a I'm not a lab rat for First Amendment issues in the sheriff's department. I'm a human being. Now, Helton said a friend who spoke to the prosecutor told her this week that no charges were coming in all of this. I had some questions for the prosecutor, namely about the timeline, just about what went into all of that. I called and left two voicemails for the assistant prosecutor today. Got no call back. Uh, I also reached out to the sheriff who did not want to add anything to that statement he had previously put out. Back to you. So, Jason, I'm curious if Twitter removed any of the tweets. Uh, she says, that, well, no, they're all still there. The threads are still mm. there. So she says it doesn't appear to have violated any terms of service. And yeah. We should also point out that each of these women, uh, the professor of nursing and Helton, uh, feel the other has violated their First Amendment rights. Each filed a complaint against the other, one with the sheriff's department, the other with the licensing and regulatory affairs, and neither was found to have merit. So in the end here, it all kind of feels like a wash, yeah. Devin.